Hello and welcome to another Pixel Maker tutorial. Today is a Patreon request from Midnight Darkness who wanted to see how to implement a quest system in PGM. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are in the sample project and the link for this sample project will be down below. There is gonna be a lot to unpack in this, but the I guess let's just start with the menu system. The menu system is gonna be very simple. We're going to have a HUD, which is you know how we, we call the menu. Then we have the pause menu, which then leads to the quest menu. So if we are to play this, you can see that if you press escape, that you can return to game by pressing space, or you can view quests. Now, when you view quests, you can see that I've set this up to display five, and then I've also set it up to have another page. So if you press right, you can go to page two. If you press left, you can go back to page one. And then if you press escape, you can return back to the title and then return back to the game, etc. So that's going to be, I guess, the first point is, you know, how did we do that menu? So let's go to the objects here. And actually, let's just see what, what's set up in here. So for the quest, we have the background. So once again, just like the, I did a collectibles video, and I made sure to have a background in each of the tabs. And that's because when you call them, you want to overlap the existing menu. And so we have a, a background for the quest, and we also just have an input. And I wanted the input to be about halfway through the screen and then about whatever 160 down. And, and so we can go and edit this object and see what these objects are doing here. So here's the background and you can see that the, the background is mostly just showing the current page. So you can see that I'm doing a show text and I'm doing text tags here. I'm, I'm doing text tags of the menu quest page selected and the menu quest page max. And so if you wanted to use this as a template, you can just go to this menu quest max, which is right here in the resources. And you can just up this to whatever you need. So if you up this to, I don't know, nine, then when you go to the menu pages here, it's going to be nine, one out of nine. But I only have two pages. And so that's what we're going to do. So yeah, so that's what that show text is showing and those are just some nice text tags to know and then depending on if the menu quest input which we'll go over later if it goes if it's processing a quest page then it's going to update it's going to update and then i think this is so this uncontrollably so yeah it's just going to update but it's still going to show and the reason why is i didn't want to blip and what I mean by that is I have this selected hide on object action change. I didn't want it to blip. And so, or what I mean by blip is disappear for a frame and then reappear. So what I do is I keep it in here and then I, I go right back to here. So yeah, unconditional right here. So if the input goes to processing a page, then it updates real quick and then goes back to here. Now, the reason you have to update is because this show text with text tags they do not update. It's not like showing a variable, but I wanted the convenience of being able to add other text like page and this little slash right here. So I would rather just deal with having to update it than pulling a variable and multiple texts and trying to position them all in the same area and look good. So it was just one of those things I was willing to give up, just adding an extra action and a check to do all this. All right, so now that we have that, that little, the background and the, the current page, we can go to the input. And so when we initialize this input, we're going to show the press escape to return. And this is just, you know, th that's just how I did it. You guys would have your own inputs. It might be an image, it might be whatever, but I just wanted to add this right here on the initialize. And notice I don't do hide on object action change, and that's so that it stays no matter what action I'm in. All right, so that initializes and instantly, or after a certain amount of time, I guess, just 0.1 seconds, goes to process the page quest. And this one, this object could have been a lot easier, but I actually wanted to showcase something that I use, that I've used quite a bit, uh, particularly in Mira. If you guys have ever seen the Mira project, particularly how I did Mira's page switching for its menu. And it's, it's actually a pretty cool setup. So I wanted to show it in this one uh, just to, to make sure that, I, that I've shown it before. 
And so what, uh, what process quest page does is first off, it needs to, um, it's, it's going to destroy the, all the quest pages and, and, th and that's the point of it. So when it, when it comes here, it wants to destroy all quest pages. So if you have more pages, say three, four, five, or something like that, you're going to want to add these execute object actions, quest page one, all of them to destroy. And this will make more sense as we come full circle, but you can kind of see that we have this quest page event and this is for page one. So if it's showing page one, this is exactly what's being shown. If it's showing page two, this is exactly what's being shown. And then you would just copy paste this. And that's, this is literally how I made page two. I copy pasted it and I just changed these variables that we'll get into in a second. But you can see that each one has a destroy. And what these does is it, it destroys itself. Make sure that none is selected on the restore, of course. But yeah, it just destroys itself. So that's how you can just blank all the pages out real quick is just have all of them destroy. All right. And also the reason why I selected all is because you'll see in page setup one that I'm calling page one multiple times. So I'm calling page one quest one. Then I'm calling page two quest or page one quest two. And as you can notice page one quest three. So the cool thing about it is, is yes, I have to generate them all one at a time, but when I destroy them, I can select this all, and then it's going to take every object that's quest page one, and it's going to send them into the destroy action. So that's how I can get rid of them all at once, which is really nice. All right, so let's just kind of go with the flow here. So when it comes to process quest state, it's going to then decide what page are you on. So the menu quest page selected. All right, and so it's going to be one because that's just well actually it's going to be whatever it is so the cool thing about this quest system is that if you are on page two and exit the menu when you come back you'll be on page two and i kind of wanted it to be that way so that when when you're in an area and you're trying to complete quests you're usually going to want to stay on that page you're not going to want to keep scrolling through these pages um so i felt that would be a nice little thing for it so anyway, yeah, if it's page one, it's going to go to page setup one right here. If it's, as you can imagine, if it's page two, it's going to go to page setup two. And what this is doing is I'm, I'm moving the coordinate of the input to zero, zero. Now, this is just in case you're moving the input at all. If, if you're moving the input at all, for, for whatever reason, say that you have a, I don't know, a selector or something like this. I wanted to move it to zero zero because I wanted all the generations to be based on a top left arrangement. And so what I did was I real quickly moved it to zero zero. Then I waited 0.1 so that the move could complete. And then I generated it. And you can see that I generated it in the middle of the screen and I did it by a 50 on the Y. And then you'll see the second one that I generated it by another 35. And then I kept generating them by 35 down the Y so that I got a nice even layout without really having to assign connection points or, or things like this. But yeah, you can see that I just did, I did the quest one, quest two, three, four, and, and of course five. So now we can take a little more look at what is going on in the page. So again, we're calling quest one. So that's where the first one's going to start. Then we call this one. So it's going to stay in this little action island. Then we call the third one, it's going to stay in this action island, fourth, fifth, so on, so on. So let's just take a look at one and you can guess what the other ones are going to be. So this is going to be the, where, where it starts. So it's going to be, it, this is more like quest processing, quest one processing. And so it's going to see a few things. The first thing it's going to see is if quest one equals zero. If quest one equals zero, uh, by the way, let's go to variables here. You can see that I have quest one. I have quest two, and then I have an associated counter for quest two. I have a quest three, a quest four, and then an, another associated counter for quest four, five, six, all, all, so on and so on. And so I have a real quick note here that zero, whoops, uh, zero is not active. One is active, not complete, and two is complete. So I like to use variables for my quests because again, zero, you can just scale them so much easier. So zero is not active. One is active. You could have 
two also be part B, and then three could be complete. So you, you could juggle this however you want, but you definitely want to make it a variable for that reason. So now in the object, or yeah, in the object here, again, if it's equal to zero, I've already told you what that means. That means that there is no quest. And so it's going to show the question marks for the quest. All right. And then you can just see some of these settings here that I like to do. I also created a, a quest name BG. So I, I have it created. And one, one reason I kind of like doing this using an image resource as your background is it gives you the size. And so then you can just plug in the size right here. And it makes it really, really easy to, to determine the size. Um, I also set a little bit of margin. I did, I wanted to horizontally line it to the left, but I wanted to vertically center it. And then, yeah, just stuff like this. All right, so that's if there is no quest. And you can see that they all lead to the same one. And it's because I want it to show those question marks if none of them have it. Now, they, they get a little different now with in progress and complete. So now let's go to this. And we can say quest one. So it equal, So quest one equals one. And that means that we actually have the quest. And so we want to return what page one quest one is and that what the description of that quest is. So this is just simply talk with Greeny about something, all right? And then you could imagine that if quest equal quest one equals two, then we're gonna show the same thing, talk with Greeny about something, but we're going to show it in a green text color. And that means it's complete. So you could do it this way, or you could have another text that you can show. Either way, it works. And then if you did have like a part B or something, you would just keep adding more actions with the appropriate links values to be those, um, to, to be those appro the, the name that you need it to be. Then you go to quest two. Now quest two, if you remember, it had an associating uh, mushroom thing right here. And let's see if this one, I don't, I don't think it is. I think it still is two. Yep. So it still equals two. So basically all these are exactly the same, but it's depending, it's just, you just have to change the variable. That, that's literally it. All right. And now we go to page two. And technically page one and page two could have been the same object. The only reason I separated them out is because I wanted to be able to delete them all separately. Page one, two, and, and so on and so on separately. All right, so now that you know how the quests are actually showing, now we can go to this cool input part here. So I ended up using common actions as the input for this. And I quickly, we have a quick escape. And this goes back to the, the main menu. And how this goes back is it executes the object action of the main menu input back to return from quest. So the main input right here, when you click to go into the quest page, it goes into the quest page, it brings up the quest screen, and then it just stays there. It just stays there. No, nothing else can happen. This is kind of how I pause the input on this menu. And so when you are in the quest menu, when you press back, you actually execute that input to go to a returned from quest menu action. And if you go to that, what this does is it hides the last screen. Because remember, if you don't have any of, the, if you don't have this option, it's going to just hide the last menu screen. So that's how I hide the quest menu and go right back to the main menu at the quest menu location, even. So I, I really kind of like that setup lately. It's uh, it, it works out pretty smooth. And so now let's go back to here. Let's go back to our common actions. And now we have a uh, page right and page left. All right, so. We need to do a couple checks here. So the first thing we need to do is obviously see if we're pressing right and make sure this is ticked. We need to see that our uh, menu quest page select is less than the quest page max. And that means that we're not going to, we, we won't be able to go to this um, common action if we're at the max page, basically, so we can only go to it if we're under the max page. And what it does is when that happens, it 
pluses one to the menu quest page selected, and then it executes object accent action to processing page quest. And so again, I lock this out by change, uh, change if any conditions met, and then I just leave this blank. That's how you lock out a common action. So you can see that when I press right, as long as I'm not already on the max page, it's going to send me to process quest page, delete all the current pages, and then it's going to select the appropriate one. So in this case, it would be page two, if we were on page one, and then it's going to show quest page two. All right, so you can kind of tell that if we press left, as long as quest page is greater than, z than one, because again, it can't be zero, it can only be one or two right now. So as long as it's greater than one, it can actually go left because you're going to minus one, which would bring it to one. So it has to be greater than one. And so with that pressed, it then minuses one, as you can imagine from the menu page selected, and then it goes to the processing quest page also. So you could see how you could just extend this without really worrying about the inputs. You could just keep adding more and more and more. And as long as you are changing the max page, then, then you're, you're going to be able to go to any page you want. All right, so now with the menu out of the way, I think we can start going to the quests themselves. So let's just start with the quest giver, talk to Greeny, all right? So we have talk to Greeny, and then we have Greeny down here. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna need to do is that I, quest givers, I like to have, go to basic settings, I like to have maintain state at end of scene. And this is just so that I can keep them in the current status of their, of their logic. You could have a whole processing thing where they process what quest they're on, but I just find that I can usually have them maintain state and it, and it works out. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is if we're in contact with it and I press A, it's going to give me the quest and it's going to start the quest by equaling quest one to one. That starts the quest, all right? Then it's gonna show some quick messaging and then as soon as I press A, it's gonna to go to the wait for talk two. Now this is kind of its new state. This is the remainder of its state basically in, in this example for the rest of the thing. Now we have a couple options here. If we try to talk to it again and quest is still equal to one, then it's then we're going to, he's going to just say the same thing. I need you to talk to Greeny. He's it's gonna say exactly what the quest said initially. However, if quest one is equal to two, now it's gonna say thanks and and move on. From there. So how do we get it to equal to two? Well, we need to talk to Greeny. And so with Greeny, you can see that we have an initialized state. We have a turn on quest indicator, because if you remember, there's a little quest indicator. I don't know if I pointed that out, but when you say, please talk with Greeny, you can see that there's a little indicator that pops up. Then when you talk with him, the indicator goes away. All right, so turn on the indicator. There is a child object called quest indicator, and I've made it to where there's a switch called quest indicator. This is a maintained state at end of scene object as well. And you can see that I added it to a connection point, all right? So the quest indicator, all you really need to know is that it has an animation that it plays. And right here, if the parent's object quest indicator is off, then it destroys. So this is all dependent on the parent, all right? The parent is what controls this. And I've had some questions about parent object. Basically, when you're choosing a parent object, you can choose from any object as long as it has that switch you're looking for. So in this case, I had to come to Greeny to choose it. But say that quest page two had it for some reason, I could choose it from there as well. It doesn't matter what object you're grabbing it from because it's still going to only check if the parent has it. So, so that's how that works. But if it's off, then it's going to go to destroy itself. Again, make sure none is checked on restore. All right, so if we go back to Greeny, so when it initializes, we're going to check that if the quest equals one, if quest one equals one or whatever quest is associated with, then we're gonna turn on the quest indicator switch, which is gonna turn on this, this child object. And then it's just gonna instantly go to wait for quest active, All right? Now, if, if for some reason you're in the same scene and it was already here, 
but you want it to turn on the indicator when you talk to the NPC, I added this check, which is going to um, check if the object self uh, indicator is off, of course, and the quest is equal to one. So if you get the quest mid scene and it's off, then it's going to turn it on real quick and then come down and, and wait. Now you could have done that many different ways, but you know, this works. And so from right here, you're just waiting for, to make sure that the quest is greater than zero, because that means that that would be the conversation for the quest and that you're with contact with it and you press A. And then literally all it does, let me get rid of this here. There we go. Is it turns the quest one equal to two. So that, that's how, that's how you complete the quest is through the greeny object. All right. Then it says, uh, shows text and then uh, has the indicator. And then if you press A, it goes back to the, the quest way active. All right, so last, that leaves us with the mushroom and the zombie quest, and they're the same, so I'll just go over the mushroom quest and you will understand how the zombie quest works. So basically, we have the initial talk here. You can see it's just the same as Greeny. You, you basically activate the quest, so quest two equals one. If quest two, if the mushrooms, sorry, if quest two mushroom count is less than five, then it's going to go, it's, it's going to say the same thing that it did giving the quest. However, if the mushroom variable is greater than or equal to five, then it's going to go to the thanks and it's going to complete the quest in here. Quest two equals two. So that's how this quest is going to complete it. So then how do you get the, the mushrooms? Well. I have, I went about it a different way than normal, and there's so many ways to go about this, but this is just something I wanted to try, and, and I did it, and, and it works. But it's also so you could do some, some other stuff if you needed to. But basically, in the mushroom here, when you are a contact and you press A on it, you will then pick up a mushroom. But instead of just adding one to the mushroom quest, I just did it by generating an object, add quest items, and I just wanted to add a mushroom. And so what this does is it goes here, it waits one second and then it destroys. However, if the mushroom quest is less than five, it's going to instantly go into here, it's gonna add one and then destroy. And that way I could separate, I think the reason I did this is that, say there was other mushrooms out there and you could still pick them up even after the quest and stuff like this, I wanted them to not pick them up. And so you could have done it in here. You could have said, okay, already completed the quest and or or picked up, not completed the quest or something like this. I just did it in here so that it would just either destroy itself or add a mushroom if the quest is active. That That's kind of the, the, the reasoning for it. So yeah, then once you just collect five of these, go back and talk to the mushroom person and then they say, thanks. They turn it quest on and we can kind of see this in action here. So if we talk to Greeny, we can see that we have the, the indicator, go to quest, and there it says, it says talk with Greeny about something, All right? Then we can go talk to this person, it says gather five mushrooms, gather red mushrooms. We can go to page two, page one, we can see that we can bounce back between these. And it's also keeping track of the mushrooms. Right there, two out of five. And we can kind of see that, I guess this is good to point this out, is... I believe it's, uh, yeah, quest two. So right here, I said gather red mushrooms and then I did the quest tag thing. And then this one, I hard capped it, but you could also do the same thing that I did with the, the page where you have a variable that says the max. So that way, if you need to change it or if you have this in multiple spots, just changing it would be super easy. But yeah, basically I'm just showing how much mush mushrooms are gathered right there. And I think that's another reason why I did this add quest thing is because this is always going to, so even when I complete this quest, for instance, so let me just complete this real quick. So right now it's white and two of five. So if I complete this by grabbing three more, you can see that it's five of five. Well, I didn't want it to, to keep going up. So I think that's why I created another object that detects whether it needs to add one or not. So now if I go and complete it, you can see that 
there I go. It's completed five of five. And then I can go and say thank you to this. And now it's completed with that. And then I can go and lastly talk to this zombie guy. And there we go. How to kill zombies, zero out of 10. And as you kill the zombies, you can imagine that the thing goes up. Yeah. Anyway, this is a pretty, this is, this is how I would go about doing a quest system. I, I don't think that doing it on your HUD is wise. I think it would add too many objects. For one, it's also not dynamic. Notice that this menu is not dynamic. And it's because dynamic menus are a pain in PGM. What I mean by dynamic is that, let's say that this quest you got right here, or let's say that this quest should technically be in position here because of how I, the order that I got the quest in. But that's called dynamic. When, when this one would appear right here, and then the next one would appear right here, and then the next one would appear right here. And those are a pain to do in PGM without a plugin or something like that. Like, this is, this is how you ha pretty much have to do it. And so, but if you separate it into its own system, you know, from, from a menu, then, then you're, you're fine, you know, and then you can have as many pages as you want and so forth and so forth. Yeah, if there's any questions, uh, comments below, Steam Forms, Discord, we'll get you figured out. That said, I'll see you at the next video.